It came as a shock to all of us when Ford decided to exit India out of nowhere. Well, it was not a surprise for them because it was a well-drawn story dating back all the way to 1995. Ford products were well-engineered, set a benchmark for driving dynamics, were quite affordable and later were cheap to maintain as well. Ford's journey in India started in 1995 when it set up a joint venture with Mahindra to manufacture and sell its cars in India. We all know the icon, the legendary car of the early 2000s. That car was a gem to drive. It had amazing driving dynamics and was very much fun too. The Josh machine. But where, where did it go, did wrong, it go wrong, for wrong for them? The joint venture with Mahindra was short-lived and Ford went ahead and bought all of Mahindra's stake to become a wholly owned subsidiary. Despite being a well-established brand globally, it failed to survive in India. There's nothing that Ford didn't do to make things right, but yet they did a lot of mistakes which actually led to their downfall. Yes, we all miss the Endeavour, the Figo as well as the EcoSport and all these cars had a huge fan following. But what are the reasons Ford failed in India? Here are five of them. First reason, not thinking the Indian way. In 1996, Ford entered the Indian market by launching the Escort, marketed as a luxury car. Ford's approach was actually based on its success in the US market, which obviously does not work in India. Indian consumers were looking for a value for money option and the Escort was unaffordable to most of them. The Escort was sold between 1996 to 2001 and it didn't gain much popularity. The car had an old 1.3 litre petrol engine, no power steering except for the diesel model and no power windows for the rear seat occupants. Ford wrongly assumed that Indian consumers will buy anything an international company had to offer without considering the needs of the local market. My advice, don't be overconfident. Indian consumers actually knew what they wanted and they simply rejected the Escort, which then failed to sell. Reason number two, the Sanan disaster. In 2011, Ford announced its plans to invest $1 billion, which is approximately Rs. 8,000 crores in a manufacturing facility in Sanan, Gujarat. However, the project was delayed and it only started production in 2015. By that time, Ford had lost significant ground to its competitors. The factory was expected to produce 2,40,000 cars a year, but Ford was not even producing half of it. Ford invested significant resources in developing the Figo and Aspire, but both of these cars failed to gain popularity. They neglected other segments, such as the compact SUV segment, which was gaining a lot of traction in the Indian market. Yes, they were one of the first movers with the EcoSport, but they did not carry on the momentum. They also made the blunder of focusing too much on hatchbacks and sedans and trying to compete with Maruti Suzuki for the number one spot in those segments. <laughs> Eventually, Ford failed to understand the changing shift towards SUVs in the Indian market. It changed colors, like the chameleon. The delays in setting up the manufacturing plant and the investment in the wrong areas led to the struggles Ford faced in the Indian market. Reason number three, not launching enough SUVs. Ford failed to adapt to changing market dynamics in India, particularly the shift towards SUVs. You said that already. This obviously put them at a disadvantage compared to its competitors. Other than the EcoSport, Ford did not launch any SUV in the mid-size SUV segment space, resulting in a significant market loss opportunity. Remember, Remember Ford, Ford was the one which actually started the SUV, SUV craze, at least the compact SUV craze, or at least the fake SUV craze with front-wheel drive jacked-up hatchbacks. Stop taunting me. Ford did not put much focus on the Endeavour, a brilliant car, an SUV which is way better than the Fortuner. And the newer models which they launched globally were not brought to India at all. Ford's limited lineup of cars in India was also reason for their failure. The company had a relatively small range of vehicles on offer, which wasn't that appealing to Indian buyers who wanted a wide variety of options to choose from. The Figo started to show its age in spite of the fact that it had spirited engines and the discontinuation of the 3.2 litre engine in the Endeavour was a big disappointment to Ford fans. Ford also did not bother to update the EcoSport, other than the fact that it got minimal changes here and there, which was again a big blunder because that car was on sale for a long duration of time, yet the new generation model was just not launched. They were sleeping over. Ford also lacked proper dealerships in the country. The dealers, instead of investing in improving the dealerships, were actually investing that money, the profit which they gained from the dealership, into real estate. Not a good bet. Reason number four, no differentiation. Ford realized earlier on that having a differentiated product would really help them and that's exactly what the EcoSport did for them because the EcoSport was a very different kind of vehicle. Nobody was offering such a kind of a car in the Indian market but competitors obviously caught up and launched multiple vehicles against the EcoSport which resulted in the EcoSport losing its charm. However, Ford did not bother to update the EcoSport. That momentum wasn't carried forward. Now, if we see competitors like Hyundai and Kia, they bought in new vehicles which were segment best in terms of the value for money proposition as well as features. The EcoSport unfortunately started to show its age and Ford just did not bother to update it which was a very big blunder because that was a vehicle which was
was well received and once a nameplate is popular in India, it will sell if you keep adding more features and keep improving it. But Ford decided, well, why bother? Another issue for Ford was the inability to understand the target audience. Companies like Maruti Suzuki, Hyundai, Kia, Mahindra, Tata, they are able to understand what consumers need and want. Unfortunately, Ford just did not do the right research to understand what customers really wanted. Now, if we see the Figo Twins, the Figo Hatchback and the Aspire Compact Sedan, both of them are fantastic cars, but Ford did not understand one important thing. That is that consumers really don't care about performance. What they care about is features. And that's an area where both of these cars were a bit lacking. Reason number five, Mahindra. Yes, the reason why Ford finally decided to leave the Indian market was Mahindra. Wait a minute. Didn't they start their India journey with Mahindra? Well, they ended it too. I'm sure most of you know that Ford and Mahindra were getting into a joint venture wherein Mahindra was actually responsible for developing vehicles for Ford, at least the platform as well as the engine, so that it would be more cost effective for Ford to launch new vehicles in India. Now, this particular partnership failed even before it got started. Both of these companies are very different in the way of thinking and working as well with different corporate cultures as well. If the joint venture had gone through, Ford would have still been in India and we would have seen versions of the XUV 700 and maybe even the Scorpio N from Ford priced attractively as well with a lot of features and good performance too. Ford was actually responsible for doing some sort of investment in the joint venture and obviously some technical inputs as well. But then Mahindra thought that what is Ford actually getting to the table? Why do we need them when we can do it alone? There could be other reasons why the Mahindra and Ford partnership did not take off, probably due to financial transparency issues and R&D bottlenecks as well. But the deal between Mahindra and Ford fell off in 2021, being the final nail in the coffin of Ford leaving India. Ford was relying too much on Mahindra to handhold them for their India journey, knowing very well that a company like Mahindra is only going to hold your hand only for a certain amount of time. We didn't do anything wrong here. Because history says that Mahindra has never sustained a joint venture or a partnership and left it midway. You can only rely on yourself. Ford did make a lot of attempts to stay back in the Indian market. They had a lot of plans as well. But in September 2021, they decided that they're going to stop manufacturing cars in India due to sustained losses, not being able to crack the Indian market, which was obviously a very tough nut to crack because of a lot of competition and the way the business environment is, something Ford just could not not manage to crack. Hear that? That's the sound of the Ford Motor Company out of business. Of course, the biggest reason for Ford to leave India is low sales. And with low sales, you have a lot of pressure coming from dealers which are in losses. And then when the Figo and the Aspire failed to sell, it was just a matter of time before Ford... Chut, 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 chut. Hey, Gary, start, cut! Could Ford have survived longer? Probably they could, but the American attitude is that just give up. We're persistent, we never give up. Already, and that's what exactly has happened with General Motors, Ford, and Harley Davidson as well. Although Harley Davidson made a comeback with Hero Motor Corp. I honestly feel that Ford could have done a lot better in the Indian market if they had decided to launch global products in India. At one point of time, Ford was talking about launching global products and they also called it One Ford Strategy. But unfortunately, nothing of that sort happened and they continued to offer us subpar products. Ford as a car brand had only one car selling in good numbers in the Indian market at one time. Like it was the Figo, then it was the EcoSport and after that, nothing really sold well for them. I honestly feel that the consumers did not see the value they should have in the Figo and Aspire because both of them are fantastic products. But Ford should have worked on brand building by bringing more global products to India. Yes, the Mustang was here. Let me hear. Please continue. But along with that, the Raptor would have done wonders for them. But unfortunately, it's a case of too little, too late. Ford has left India. We are all in tears. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's a like button. And also subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comment section below which car company should I do the next case study.